one of the benefits of being part of the Retro Gamers Club is that you get to send in your hardware to us. You just pay the shipping to and from, and we'll fix it. If we require some parts to fix it, we may charge you depending on whether we have a piece laying around that we can use or we have to put new stuff in. One of the members, Scott, sent me a box of stuff last week for me to go through and see what I can do to fix it. First thing you sent me though is some cool mags. Me to read old school gamer magazine. Oh, by the way, I have been invited to write for this. I just have to get time to write for this, but it's gonna be fun. And then some other magazines from 2008 Game Room. I haven't even looked at these yet, but it's kind of cool. I mean, it reminds me of back in the 80s and all the cool stuff. And another one from 2008 called Game Room, obviously. Now that doesn't scream 80s, I don't know what does. Well, maybe late 80s, early 90s. Actually, more like 80s. Barefoot? Really? Well, maybe then. Maybe they did barefoot back then. But that was cool for him to send it to me. Give me something to look at. And then I got a big box over here. I'm just keeping it out of the way because it is big. Of stuff I got to go through. All kinds of things. Today I'm going to be concentrated on the ColecoVision stuff, but he sent me... I'm assuming this is a 5200 joystick. Uh, no, it might be a 7800 joystick. We all know what that is. Another Atari 2600 joystick. Okay. Paddles. Paddles are cool because they're just a little potentiometer inside. It's like a volume control. And if you really want to get cute, you can make a mouse out of paddles. Because you just need to have the ball roll one paddle one way and roll the other paddle the other way, and you got a mouse. I used to try to do that when I was had my 6000 XL a long time ago, back in like '82. And then another Atari. Where's the good stuff? Another set of paddles. I should have looked at this. And another set of paddles. Another Atari joystick. Oh, this is a 5200 one. Oh, this is the ones that don't self-center. Yeah. Look at that. See? This is what was the big issue for the 5200 is this thing right here. See how this joystick doesn't center by itself very well? It's trying to, so it may have been a later on version, but... Yeah. If it's pushed it aside and you go to play your game, <laughs> you can't play your game. <laughs> yeah, design flaw. Another 2600. Are you telling me, Scott, in all of these things, I only got one ColecoVision controller, two ColecoVision controllers to look at, and then I got all these other things? I like the keypad. The keypad's better than this awful thing. I mean, I shouldn't degrade it, but this is an awful thing. So let's clean this all back up, because we're going to test the, 26, or the ColecoVision controllers today. Get all this stuff back in the box. I'll test these other things too, but for now, I'm just going to test these, because I'm set up for that. So we have our two standard ColecoVision controllers here. They've seen better days, I can tell you that right now. They are dirty. What i got running on here, let me just reset it so you can see the title screen. This is a Super Controller Tester by Novatech, or Novatech, or whoever it was. The reason I use it, it's a very simple way to test your controllers. You don't have to use a super controller for that. Wait for it to go through this thing. You have your directions up here, your number pad, and the four buttons. Even though they only have two on this one on the super controller, you have four. And down here you have your spinner values. So you have everything right on the screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this one in. There. I'm going to check the directions now. So southwest isn't working too well. Southeast isn't working at all. East isn't working. Oh, no, east got it. So, for the start, it looks like the little plastic disky thing in there is bad, which is interesting because I have these right here that were made by a friend of mine, 3D printed. I'm going to give them a shot and see what happens. So, let's just take a piece of tape, like so, and put it on the back. I'm going to write down what's wrong with it so far. So we got N-E-S-E-S-W. Those are bad. 
Fire buttons. Nothing. Oh, we got something. So they're just dirty in there. They need some major cleaning. And number pad. All right, so on this controller here, what we have is dirty fire buttons and the little disky thing needs to be replaced. I might be able to adjust it to make it work too. Let's just put in um, clean buttons. So I do that right down there. That way I know what to do after I'm done using the ColecoVision to test it. One of these days I gotta make an easier way of plugging into it instead of having to go in there and fight it. I should have like a quick release on the outside. I actually I may have something I can use that for. I should give that a shot. So we're gonna do the other one. Um, well, since number one's all messed up, I'm gonna switch to number two. Meaning that it's messed up and that it's been used, so I'm gonna switch to number two. Okay, this one, okay, so all the controllers are working, it just needs cleaning. All, all the directional are working. Fire button, arm button. Need cleaning, at least. So I'll take a piece of tape, I'm gonna write down fire, arm, or if you don't call it that left button, right button. I call them fire and arm. Because that's what it's called in the software, in the BIOS when you're coding it. All the keys work. So this one is relatively pretty good. Again, just needs major cleaning. So we have those there. Now I'm going to unplug this, move this out of the way, and I'm going to pull this apart and we're going to do some cleaning. All right, so the camera's been moved above the bench now so you can watch me work. I got some supplies here. Contact cleaner, isopropyl alcohol, some Q-tips, a piece of very fine sandpaper about a quarter inch wide, and a microfiber cloth. First one I'm going to work on is the one that has a bad fire and arm button. Take the sticky off of that. And it's kind of overkill for this, but since I have it out, I'll use the electric screwdriver to pull it apart. This center screw right here holds the joystick. I have yet to figure out what that thing's called, that little thingy in there. Um, I'll show you in a second. The plastic ring that causes it to do the diagonal. I don't really know what it's exactly called, but it called, holds that in place. You don't have to remove that one yet, unless you actually have to take that out. So once they come up, lift it back. There's the clip down in the end here. Pull them up like so. Oh, and I need one other cleaning thing. I need um, Windex. Use some Windex glass cleaner for the keypad here. Just give it a quick shot. Get the gunk out that you can't get to from the other side of the controller. Or from the outside of the controller. And you know, all the cookie crumbs and everything else has been in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to clean these here. This thing right here, whatever this is called, that's what that's for. That screw holds that in place. If you remove that screw, then you can lift the whole thing out. Which actually I'm going to do because I want to... Actually, no, this one I don't have to. I just got to spray them out. I was going to say I was going to use the sandpaper to go inside here. So you use the sandpaper before and I'll have to do it on the other one is you take the sandpaper, spray contact cleaner in and you put the sandpaper in underneath press down and pull back and forth a couple times and flip and do the same and you clean all the corrosion out of there if it's really bad. But for this one, all I have is fire buttons. So I'm going to spray some in each one, go back and forth, loosen them up, spray some more, turn it over, let some of the stuff drip out. I don't know what it would do to my pad here. Maybe I should clean it off. It shouldn't hurt it. Now, I just made a mistake, which I probably could have hid, but I made a mistake in that I unplugged the ColecoVision, and I should still have it plugged in so I can test these after I'm done doing it. So, I'm going to pause this for a moment. I'm going to do that. All right, so I brought this back open. I plugged it in. Since uh, I'm not using any kind of um, soldering iron, I guess I can even plug it in here. I just want to make sure that these keys are actually, or the fire buttons are actually working now. So, I plugged it back in. I'm going to look on the screen here. 
before I close it up. I don't want to close it up and then find out it didn't work. Because that's no fun. I'm just waiting for the thing to go through its 20 seconds. There we go. Still nothing. That's not good. So when I get nothing on the second tire, I come down here and I look and just make sure nothing's loose here. But there's nothing loose. So this is just really, really bad in there. Let's do it some more. Turn you off. I might have to pull the, the circuit board out of the bottom of the case to spray from the other side. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to avoid that. The nice thing, or the interesting thing about the ColecoVision is that the fire button control lines also control the number pad and the um, directional controls. So, if these aren't working, if everything's not working, then I would go wiring. But since these other things are working, I'm mostly thinking it's dirty in here. They could be bad. I've had bad ones before. Get all this extra water, not water, extra contact cleaner out. Even though it does evaporate, there's no reason to leave it in there. And we'll turn that back on and we'll test this again. I probably could have left it on and just unhooked the thing, which I will do in the next one. Let's see what we got now. Still nothing. Very fascinating. Yeah, I'm getting movements and I'm getting keypads, it's just I'm not getting anything out of here. Are they really that dirty inside? Wow. Okay. So let's just unhook this now. Let's just take it out and see what we've got going on the inside. Am I going to have to break out the soldering iron and fix this thing? We'll see. I don't see anything wrong in here, like bad solder joints, no cold solder or anything like that, so I'm going to have to go the hard way. Take these out, get out my toothbrush, no, it's no longer a toothbrush, don't think I use this to brush my teeth because I don't. Get out the toothbrush, I'm going to put some isopropyl in here, I just want to clean this back off too. Let's just scrub all this out since I'm here. Clean that back off. Yeah, there's no bad, I'm looking at the solder joints here and there's no bad solder joints, so that's not an issue. Now what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go from this direction now. I'm going to push this in, I'm going to go right up in here and I'm going to spray the heck out of it. Usually you don't have to go from this side. You can usually go right from the top of that crack and the hole in it. It works just fine there. But I'm going to really, really try to get this thing to clean itself. Try the other one too. Now see, that, as I was saying, it's fire and arm. If you look on here, it does say actually fire and arm. So that's why I always call them fire and arm. That's the standard nomenclature. Though a lot of people are left button, right button. Now, there's always a possibility one of these diodes is bad, but I really don't think so because some, because everything else wouldn't work. You'd have something else that would be a failure. So let's try this again. Plug it back in here. Yeah, again, I'm going to have to put, make me a... Still nothing. Wow, you're really in bad shape. What up with you, dog? Okay, so... The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a direct short. I'm going to see if I can make this thing actually hack like somebody pressed the button. I want to see. I was getting nothing. So you definitely are bad. Definitely, definitely, definitely bad. So it's on the circuit board. There's something on the circuit board that it is not happy about. It's just fascinating. I've only had one or two of these do this, and it's usually clean, but this is not a cleaning issue at all. Nope, nope, nope. And down here, I'm not finding any broken wires. 
I'm not finding any bad solder joints. So this was a stumper. Now, I could go through and try to diagnose all this, but you know, normally what I do at this point is I look for in my stock and I find one that's not good, where everything else worked but the keypad shot, and I pop it out, replace it, done. Then save this one as a parts piece. So I'll probably end up doing that with that one. So let's get the other one. I'll plug this and get it out of my way. I'm going to take this and set it to the side over here. This one will get rid Knock things over. This one will get rebuilt using parts. Now let's go to this one here. This one is north south. This one is the diagonal directions and clean the buttons because they were dirty. I took this one out because I'm going to replace that part with the new piece, I believe. I'm going to, I'll look at it first just to make sure it's not like loose or bent. I'm pretty sure I'm going to replace that thingy distributor. Oh look, the keypad stuck. That's dirty. This right here, if you ever come, if you ever take one apart you wonder what this is, this goes on here on the edge and the reason for that is, is to... I thought I'd run that battery there before I heard a beep is to stop when you insert an overlay into here to stop it from going under the key cover so if you ever take one apart you wonder what this is for it goes on the right hand side and it just sits there loosely if it doesn't want to stay you can always put a piece of tape on the back to hold it in place which i'll probably end up doing first off let's clean this thing out again just like i did the other one a little bit of, uh, of the glass cleaner. Get rid of the cookie crumbs. I'll do this right now, like I said. Take some scotch tape here. Transparent tape. You don't want to give scotch their due. Put it over here on the other side here. I'm just going to take this and just... Like so. This holds it in place so it doesn't come loose until I put it back together. Then once it's back together, it stay together and stay in place. Now this one, I'm going to, let me see this, come out. First off, I'm going to do the buttons first. Hit the buttons to work. Come here. Both fire buttons are working nicely, and just to verify, these are still good. All right, fire buttons are working nicely. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to take this one. Where is the screwdriver? Pop this out. They get stuck down in there. And trying to pull them out is not always successful. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take this out like so. So they sit in that square hole. You got to try to force them out. Sometimes you got to really force them out. It's stuck in there pretty good. Slowly working it out. It's only been in there for 40 years, so. Now, what it seems like is, see, you, you may not be able to see it, but there are a lot of flex to this, or a lot of bend to the little cross pads here. So, when you go on a diagonal, these aren't going down, they're just sitting up in the air because there's too much flex in them. Hi, Millie from the future here. The next little segment, I was demonstrating a 3D printed replacement for the little doodad thing. And after filming the video and editing the video and rendering the video and just about ready to upload it, I learned that the person who produced it is taking it to somebody else. So I didn't want to say anything bad about it.
So I'll cut that little piece out. Back in the video. Okay. Now, I could try to reuse this one, or I have the other one that doesn't work. I can pull that part out and make this one a good one out of the one that don't work. And then this one will be, because this is going to be a parts machine. I shall do that. So this is the one that the fire buttons just aren't working at all. And I'm going to repurpose this. And I'll end up repurposing the keypad on another control panel or control board I, I have. Push that one in there, lock it in place nicely. Don't want to rely on the screwdriver, oh, that screwdriver, the screw pulling it down into place. I want to lock it in place as best as I can by pushing it in. If you just rely on the screw, you may end up stripping it out and never even getting it to lock. Now put this back on it. I've done it twice without showing you. Remember, you got the hooks down here. Slide that up underneath here. I usually put my finger inside there to hold the keypad in place and then you can push down and lock it in. First thing I do is put this one in just to hold it in place. That holds the circuit board in place so it don't go anywhere. Then put the other screws in here. And the other thing you want to do too is once you tighten, put these in and tighten them up, you want to test the fire buttons obviously. But you want to test them before you do anything. Plug them in because sometimes if you over tighten them, the fire button and the arm button will jam. They'll go in but not come back out. And if it does that, I'll show you how you resolve that issue. Go easy on, I'm letting this thing ride in, I'm not pushing down too hard. Go easy on tightening them up because you can snap this piece off you permanently. Now what happens is, okay they came out, but sometimes what happens is you push them and they stick in there. And to adjust that you just take a screwdriver or a Phillips and just back this out a quarter turn just to loosen them up. So we have that back together, let's see what we got again. We still have bad here. You know, I think maybe we may just have bad contacts too. Maybe it isn't the distributor. I'm going to call it the distributor. Looks like the east is not working at all now. All right. We shall open it back up. We shall fix it again. This is why it really helps to have set up the way you can test the measure working on them because otherwise you'd be putting it back together take it all apart fix it put it back together take it to wherever you got your system set up plug it in didn't work then you're like eh, gotta do it again all right so now i'm going to do is i'm going to use the sandpaper method and i'm going to get up inside these ones here at least from my thing it from looking at it, the east one is not working at all so i want to do that one i'm going to clean them all at the same time while i'm in here but let's do the east first a little bit of this in there. I'm going to take the sandpaper, sandpaper side up first, the gritty side up, slide it in, press down, pull out. Turn it over, grit side down, slide it in, press down, pull out. Now the other ones are working so I'm just going to clean them. Again, flip it over, let all the cleaning stuff out, all of whatever it is. You smell the stuff long enough, it gets you high. So, what has it got in the butane? It doesn't say ingredients. Oh, it causes cancer and reproductive harm. Oh, only if you're in California. Whew, I'm in, New York, I'm in Pennsylvania, so I'm all right. All right, so this is dry. I was just letting it dry, too. Just so you wonder, what's he doing? Just letting it dry. Now, we shall go back together again. Sometimes when I come do restorations of these systems, I will take them completely down to the component parts and I will scrub them out. Because I don't plan on using them again, I plan on just putting them up. 
But this one I'm just cleaning up. I want to make sure she works really good. Then I'll clean up the outside. And it'll be one of the ones that's going back to Scott. And I will repair his other one. That'll go back to Scott too and test these. And then I'll look at the Atari 2600 controllers and stuff and see what I can do with them. I don't know if I can touch the 7800 and the 5200 other than just they're set, yeah, other than just cleaning them. So let's see what we got. All right, I got all my cardinal directions. All, uh, all of them are working in there. It's a little iffy on some of them, but they are all working. Yeah, they're, now, now they're working. Okay, so she's a good. Let's just make sure everything still works. All right, so this one is good. It took a bit, but that one is good. Now the other one, I'm gonna have to go through my parts bins and just and dig out and figure out what's wrong with it. But there we go. Those two I've worked on. This one is fine. I'll just clean it up. Get some Windex, toothbrush, scrub it down, make it look pretty. The other one I'll go in my parts box and I'll pull out some parts and I'll rebuild it to make it a working one again. Then we'll send it back to Scott along with whatever I can salvage on the other ones. Have a good day.